Welcome to the St. Ignatius College Prep College Fair. We are so excited to have you in this presentation today. We have some fantastic schools here with us. Each of them will have six minutes to share more information about the institution, but we'll be around for the entire session to answer your questions. My name is Jessica and I'll be your facilitator for tonight. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items for us to go over. The first one is your camera and your microphones are off, so they cannot see or hear you. You can use the Q&A button to ask any questions during this session to our presenters. They'll see it, so make sure you put it, some, some questions in there. This is one of the many different sessions happening tonight, so make sure you go back to the website and double check the schedule. This session is being recorded and will be available at strivescan.com forward slash Ignatius. Now I'd like to turn it over to our first presenter, Butler University. All right, thank you, Jessica. I'm gonna go ahead and get my screen share going for everyone. There we are. All right, so welcome um, St. Ignatius students and families. Um, excited to be here. My name is Laura Shutt and I'm the Assistant Director of Admission um, for Butler University. Um, Butler is a private, non-religiously affiliated, mid-sized university located in the city of Indianapolis in Indiana. As you can see in the photo here, um, the university is just about five miles north of the downtown area, so you can kind of see the skyline there. Um, so campus itself is really tucked away in a very residential neighborhood within the city, so really giving you that true campus feel. We have just under 4,500 undergraduate students, and additionally, we have about 500 or so grad students, but really have that focus on that undergraduate student experience. Um, many find our size to really provide that small school feel with a lot of big school opportunities. Uh, with the average class size right at 24 and the student to faculty ratio at 12 to 1, you're going to find that classroom experience to be just very student focused, very engaging. Your, your professors will know you and you'll get to know your classmates as well uh, through lots of discussion and group projects. You can see there that we have six different academic colleges that focus on communication, education, liberal arts and sciences, pharmacy and the health sciences, visual and performing arts, and business. Um, for any of you that are unsure of what you want to study, though, I always encourage you to look into our exploratory studies program. So while it's not a requirement for all majors, we do have 75% of our students that complete, that complete at least one internship before they graduate. Um, many will take advantage, of course, of our location in the city uh, for their internship, but we also have students that will do internships in Washington, D.C., New York City, or even while they study abroad. And you can see there, um, we do have a large number of students that do study abroad, about right around 40%. Um, and we have 200 plus programs in 60 different countries. So switching gears to talk a little bit about life on campus, um, Butler is a very fun and vibrant campus community. Um, we are a residential campus, um, so we do have a three-year housing requirement. And we recently built two new residence halls, one for first-year students, one for sophomores, and both have really that focus on sweet style living. We do have 130 different clubs and student organizations, a really active Greek life with about 35% of students participating. We have 20 NCAA Division I um, athletic teams and we're part of the Big East Conference. Um, if you're a sports fan, one fun fact is that you do get free tickets to all of our athletic events and that'll include men's basketball, um, which is really a big deal on campus. And then there are also gonna be um, several club and intramural sports as well. We do have a very active diversity center, um, which is the hub of all of our student affinity groups. So our Black Student Union, Latinx Student Union, Gender Equity Movement, um, to name a few. So as I mentioned at the beginning, um, Butler is located right in the city of Indianapolis. And I always like to highlight some of the great opportunities that our students have as a result of that. Um, Indy is the 17th largest city in the nation. So you're gonna find all those things that you think of with major cities, athletic events, cultural events, the arts, shopping, restaurants, um, just a lot of fun and vibrant city to be a college student in. And then, as I said, we're five miles north of downtown, um, but you're gonna have a lot of different transportation options, which makes it really easy to get around. Uh, Broad Ripple is a neighborhood just northeast of campus, and that really gives you that college town type feel. So a lot of um, local restaurants, cafes, boutiques, just a fun social area to be with your friends when you wanna get off campus for a bit. And there is a free shuttle that runs um, from campus to Broad Ripple. So you can definitely check that out. 
Um, being mindful of time, I do want to kind of shift gears and talk about the admissions process real briefly um, and giving you some highlights here in terms of our academic profile. Um, so this is where a typical student is, academically speaking, so the middle 50% range for GPA, ACT, and SAT. Um, for GPA, we will use your weighted GPA, um, which of course is most commonly that highest GPA on your transcript. Um, and then for the test scores, um, this is just reflective of those who chose to apply with test scores, um, which is about 50% of our applicants from last year. Here's just the quick list of everything that you would submit for your application to be complete. Um, there is no application fee, so it is free to apply. And you can use the Butler app or the Common app, although um, many might find the Common app a little bit easier, um, especially if you're looking at other schools who are also on the Common app. And then we are test optional and will be remaining test optional every year moving forward. So you can certainly choose to submit those scores or not. In terms of dates to kind of keep in mind, our application opens up August 1st as you head into your senior year. And then we have two timelines, early action or regular decision. Uh, early action is the one I usually almost always recommend. Um, it's non-binding and you get a lot of great benefits by applying early, including getting your admissions decision that much earlier and the opportunity to apply for a few additional other scholarships beyond our merit scholarship. Just looking at cost real quickly, wanted to give you that overall cost, um, just under 60,000 there. Um, very few though are paying that overall cost because of all the different scholarship options. So I mentioned um, November 1st being best for scholarship consideration. Um, that actually now goes up to 24,000. So there was a small increase there. Um, and you can see the vast majority of Butler students are receiving gift aid. We do encourage families to file the FAFSA. Um, we do want that. Um, well, the priority date really is that December 1st date, but at the latest March 1st. Um, and then I encourage you to use the net price calculator um, to just get a good estimate of what that out-of-pocket cost might be. Um, and then I am going to go ahead and conclude perfect timing. Um, so if you do have any questions, feel free to drop those in the Q&A for me. And I will also share my contact information with you all. So best of luck with your college search and go dogs. Thank you so much. Uh, so next up, we will have DePaul University. Good evening, everyone. Uh, let me go ahead and share my screen as well before we get started this, this evening. Here. All right. So DePaul University is a small liberal arts university uh, located in Greencastle, Indiana. We're about 45 minutes west of Indianapolis. Uh, we are the number one private liberal arts institution in the state of Indiana, and we're also ranked among the top 50, uh, now specifically number 46 uh, in the nation. Uh, we also, for students who are interested in study abroad, we do offer uh, many programs for students to go abroad and study, uh, which puts us at, at now a ranking number three uh, for study abroad programs among private liberal arts institutions in the US. So at DePaul University, we have a uh, population of about 1700 students, about 25% of those students identify as students of color uh, or international students. We do represent students from over 38 states and 35 countries across the globe. Uh, we are uh, heavily believing in diversity, equity, and inclusion with a specific emphasis on inclusivity to make sure that every student feels welcome and belongs on campus. Our new president, Dr. Lori S. White, works very hard to make sure uh, that every student is uh, felt um, and heard and uh, feels like they belong on campus. Uh, we do have two schools that make up DePaul University. Uh, that's the College of Liberal Arts and the School of Music. Uh, let's say you're interested in, this, in music but don't necessarily want to major. Uh, that is very possible by becoming a CLA musician, which is a College of Liberal Arts musician, meaning that you can have a major in our College of Liberal Arts while still being involved in the School of Music. 
among our top 10 majors that you see there, uh, global health is an example of our design your own major, uh, which allows students to choose from three different departments in order to create uh, the best possible major for them. <clears throat> so I want to like take a second to describe how some of our students are on campus. Uh, many of them are driven, curious, outgoing, social. If you're more of the introverted type, uh, they're more uh, contemplative or more to themselves, but every student has a place and a belonging on campus. So one of the things that we offer students at DePaul is access, and it starts with faculty mentorship, developing, the, developing those relationships early on to be able to uh, have opportunities like internships, uh, research opportunities with professors during the summer, and even alumni connections. Uh, we have thousands of alumni who are waiting to connect with students on that professional level as well. We also bring the world to DePaul through our study abroad programs. We allow students to go every year to more than 100 countries across the globe. Uh, we also bring world leaders uh, like Malala Yousafzai and Condoleezza Rice to campus uh, to be able to share their insights and experiences with students on how they can achieve similar or greater levels of success. We also have uh, a number of student organizations as well, ranging from Greek life to community service to help students find their niche on campus. Currently, we are about 66% Greek life on campus, although you, are not, uh, you don't have to participate in Greek life if that is not for you. It does nothing to your social standing. You'll still have the same friends uh, and you'll be able to create those memorable experiences. So when it comes to our application, uh, we are on the Common App exclusively. There is no fee to apply, and there are no additional essays uh, other than the prompt that's attached to the application. We do look at your application from a holistic standpoint, uh, meaning that we recognize that you are more than just a GPA or a test score. We understand that not every student is a great test taker, and so we want to look at your application from uh, many vantage points, including your recommendations, what sorts of classes you're taking to challenge yourself, like APs and honors courses, uh, we also look at any activities you do inside and outside of school, whether you're involved in the community uh, or whether you're involved in clubs uh, in school. And then we have the financial aid. So it costs about $67,000 to come to DePaul. Uh, for every student who applies, they're automatically considered for up to $40,000 in merit scholarship uh, based on GPA and test scores, should you choose to submit them. We also have additional scholarships that are available. Uh, based on academic merit, community service involvement, uh, music ability, uh, and the list continues. And then there's also the FAFSA that is required. And that is my presentation on today. Thank you, guys. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, so next up, we will have Beloit College. All right. Here I go. All right. Uh, hi, everyone. Hello, St. Ignatius. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I had the privilege of visiting your campus last fall. I absolutely loved it. It looked like Hogwarts. I could not believe um, the beauty that you had right there in Chicago. So um, I am here to talk about the light, though. So my name is Yana. I'm an admission counselor here. I'm also an alum, I'm a proud graduate of the class of 2020. Um, so I would love to share my experience with you today. Um, we are about an hour and a half away from St. Ignatius, and you can see in that map the bottom of your screen right there. We are pretty close by to Madison, Milwaukee, and Chicago, which are all major major cities. Um, but we have a nice, quiet park campus feel. Um, so I have personally really, really loved that. But Beloit was founded in 1846. So we are 176 years in the making um, and creating an amazing liberal arts education experience. We have had um, 176 years to really find a way to perfect that education and to make sure that our students graduate as effective communicators, productive collaborators, creative problem solvers, and agile professionals and intellectuals. And you do all of that and you become this amazing student and human um, by really interacting with a diverse group of students. So um, Beloit College is actually the number one most diverse college in Wisconsin. We're very, very proud of that title, especially for a student body that's around um, 13,000 students. So we are 
small liberal arts, um, but still have around 29% of our students that identify as the Black, Indigenous, people of color population, um, as well as 24% that are first generation, 17% international, which is an awesome number for the size of our campus. Um, so we're so, so proud of that diversity on campus. And with that, um, of course, comes a lot of diversity of thought. So we have about a third of our students that can't seem to choose just one thing to study. Uh, so we have a lot of double majors on campus, which is um, a really, really awesome thing to be a part of and to get to experience more than just one subject while you're here. And, you know, the liberal arts curriculum in general is really forcing students to um, explore different things and not just stay down that one narrow path of their major. So um, these are just our four most popular majors that you could see here on screen, but we have over 40 to choose from as well as many minors. Um, and you could do any combination. You could do double minor, you could do double major, triple major, whatever you have time for in your four years while you're here. Um, so the Logan Museum of Anthropology on campus is one of our um, museums. We do have two and um, that was one of them. So anthropology is actually our most popular major here because we do have access to that museum, access to hands-on education. Um, and lots and lots of research on very old artifacts. We have over 400,000. Um, biochemistry is next, as well as creative writing and business and economics. So all of these programs have really strong support with um, our amazing alums, with med school preparation, um, editing and publishing experience with the Bullet Fiction Journal or the Upton Forum where you get to meet Nobel laureates and really prominent figures in the field of economics and business. Um, we have connections to um, Hollywood productions with um, um, this, the producer of, of Spider-Man. We also have a connection to Amazon um, video for Europe. So really, really awesome, awesome alums to get to work with in the business field. Beyond that, Beloit is very proud to have reimagined um, quite recently our approach to advising and mentorship on campus. So with that is our first program called the Advanced Mentoring Program, which actually promises our students to be mapped with an academic advisor, a faculty member, three days after choosing Beloit for their college. Um, so, you know, 72 hours after you're going to meet with a professor and they're just going to tell you, you know, what Beloit is going to look like for you. They're going to help you choose your classes. They're just really going to be that friendly face to welcome you here once you Move in. And then you take a course with them. They're going to um, connect you to different campus offices, do different workshops to really work with you and figure out um, who you are at Beloit, who you want to be in your future. Um, we also have this awesome new program called the Career Channel. So these two are really working together to help students figure out a career for themselves. Um, you know, liberal arts, you're an English major. What do you want to do with that? Um, you can be a teacher, you could be an author. What if you don't want that? These career channels are really introducing you to career options. Um, so you could be a part of an arts channel, the world building channel, the sports channel. Um, we, these are really trying to channel your interest um, in careers and, and really broaden that your, your expectations, I guess, and open your mind to things and careers that you might not have considered before. So um, we're going to connect you to different alums and different uh, companies in the area as well as, um, you know, internships and wherever you want to be. It could be in your hometown, it could be in a new state, a new city, um, and just make sure that you know that you have many options open to you with your liberal arts degree and within your major as well. Um, so after all of this mentorship, this guidance, and um, this networking at Beloit, we have about 93% of our students that are employed or in graduate school within six months of graduation. So they go um, and have some very, very successful futures, whatever they may look like. Now, outside of academics, we are a relatively small campus, again, of about 13,000 students. So we have a lot of experience with creating a campus design for students. Um, the best example of that is this building that you see um, on this PowerPoint here with the big smokestack. That is our new student union and recreation center called the Powerhouse. Um, it has everything a student needs really to be um, successful, whichever, whatever that means to them. So healthy mind, healthy body. We have a gelato station. We have a running track um, hanging overhead. We have a new pool and a pool table. Um, so there's really just a lot for students to be able to hang out, um, have a club meeting, get some work done, and, and really be them be their best selves. Um, but beyond that, we also have about 60 clubs to choose from. So if you are really engaged and you want to be involved in many organizations, Greek organizations, whatever that is, that is available to you. You can also start your own club if there is, you don't see something that you want to be a part of already. Um, we also have about 18 varsity sports and we are Division Three. 
studies, which is a really great balance between academics and athletics. I'm going to jump ahead over here, skip my picture slide. Um, and we just want to show you my deadlines real quick, November 1st, December 1st, and January 15th. So thank you so much for joining and I'm ending now. Thank you so much. So next up, we will have Ithaca, Ithaca College. Wonderful, thank you so much. Let me get just get my screen share going and then we'll be set to move forward. All right, for those of you who don't know where Ithaca College is, we are located in New York State in what's called the Finger Lakes region of New York. Ithaca actually was founded in 1892 as a music conservatory. And as such, we have grown from that uh, foundation of understanding theory and practice and performance in the areas of music to include that with our five different schools that now exist. There's our, our School of Music, which we were actually founded as. We also have a School of Health Sciences and Human Performance, a School of Humanities and Sciences, a School of Business, which is one of the top business schools in the country. And we also have a School of Communications. Now amongst those different schools, you're going to find about 90 different majors. So there's a lot to choose from at Ithaca College. And there's also about 71 different minors. You can take minors outside of the area of focus that you have, and we encourage that exactly for some of our majors. What the photos that you see here is the original Boardman House, which is where the School of Music was founded down in the city of Ithaca. And then right now we are located though, however, on South Hill, which overlooks the city. And let me just get things moving here on this slide. Ithaca actually, as I mentioned, was founded as that music school, but we've grown a lot. Um, we currently have about 5,000 students, and much like the other colleges that you've seen here tonight, we come from a variety of different places across the country and across, across the globe. The photos that you see on the bottom left-hand side of your screen is a face-on look at campus instead of the overhead view. It is um, a residential campus, and you can get from one end of the campus to the other in about 10 minutes walking. So it's really pretty, pretty easy to do. And if you're interested in going down to the city of Ithaca, it's a quick ride down on the TCAT bus or um, a quick walk down the hill. Now, mind you, most students, if they're going downtown, they actually do choose to take the bus back up because it is a little bit of a steep hill. As you can see on the picture on the right-hand side on the bottom, we overlook Cayuga Lake, which is one of the Finger Lakes in New York State. We are about four hours from New York City, Philadelphia, Toronto, um, Buffalo, and Albany around three hours. Those are some of the major cities in New York State. Um, I, I mentioned our population for undergrads is about 5,000. Um, average class size you can see here is about 17 students, and the faculty student ratio is really low, about um, nine to one. We have um, a lot of opportunities for students to engage not only here at the college on campus, but also down in the city. As others have mentioned, we also have an exploratory program at the college. One of the unique things that we like to um, share with students about this is you can spend up to two years in the exploratory program and then declare your major after that time frame. You have a specific advisor while you're in this program that helps you understand the breadth of our curriculum. They also will help you in terms of understanding the types of courses which might suit your interests. So if you're not sure what your major is, or you're not sure what that would, you would like that to be, it's not a major thing. You have time to explore. Um, once you declare your major, you'll move in with an academic advisor in that particular school. Um, but you also um, don't have to worry about um, missing out on registration for classes because as an exploratory student, you do register for classes directly behind seniors um, in this program. We have opportunities for students to engage from day one. So whether you are in a health sciences major and you're engaged in classes that are measuring uh, performance and things of that nature, whether you're a student in the School of Music and you're actually being engaged with your theory, practice and performance there, or whether you're involved in our School of um, Communications behind the camera or in front. Students have active participation in their majors right away. You don't have to wait until you've taken two, three, four classes to be able to begin that process. In fact, one of the things that we always know that happens in the fall is when students, new students are on campus, we can always tell because certainly from the communication school, they're out on campus with their cameras and their mics and interviewing individuals and getting that practice right away. And go back one here. As far as student life goes, there's a lot to do on campus. Um, as I mentioned, we do have a school of music. 
that has over 300 performances every year, both by students, faculty, and invited uh, performers. We also have a Department of Theater Arts, and that Department of Theater Arts puts on six main stage productions every year, in addition to student productions. Um, we have athletics. We are Division Three in the Liberty League in the, uh, the Northeast. And our students really take advantage of the downtown area. Ithaca has a walking mall called the Commons, and it's a favorite place of students to go um, hang out with their friends, enjoy the, the local restaurants and fairs. In fact, on the previous slide, you may have seen we have per capita about more uh, restaurants and diversity in restaurants than you would find actually in large cities like New York City. One of the um, traditions at Ithaca College is um, something called Senior Splash. So when you are a senior during senior week, you get the opportunity to jump in the fountains. Now there's a tradition that says if you jump in those fountains before you're a senior, you might not be graduating. I don't think that's really a threat of any course, but it certainly is a tradition among students to respect that and say, you know what? Senior year, it's a special thing. We've been looking at those wonderful fountains as part of our campus all the time that we're here. And we really want to have that as part of our special experience at that point in time. We do have study abroad options for students in over 50 different countries. For Ithaca College, however, we have a London Center, which is our own campus in London. And many students from our business school or our, our Department of Theater Arts do go there to study. That's part of their experience uh, because it's near the financial district and also the theater district in London. We also have a program in Los Angeles, which is our Pendleton Center. Students who are going to that particular location are doing internship experiences as well. We understand that you're bringing your whole self to Ithaca College, and these are some of the resources that you'll find coming to Ithaca that will help support you as your student journey there. Didn't get to talk about SATs, ACTs. We've been optional since 2012, so no need to worry about that. We do have a lot of application deadlines, and I would be happy to share those with you in the chat if you have questions about that. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So next up, we're going to have St. Olaf College. Hello, hello, everyone. Nice to meet you. My name is Seda Bagiri, and I use she, her pronouns, and I am from St. Olaf College. I'm originally from Armenia and graduated last year from St. Olaf. Um, I flew all the way across the ocean to be uh, here in Minnesota. So happy to share a little bit about my journey at St. Olaf, as well as the resources and opportunities we offer here. So we are located in north of Minnesota, which is about six hour drive from Chicago. It's 45 minutes drive away from Minneapolis and St. Paul, which are um, our um, biggest cities um, in Minnesota. And let me, I just realized I haven't shared my, here we go. Now you have access to my slideshow. Um, one second, here we go again. Uh, so 3000 students, it's a small liberal arts institution. So uh, we are very well known for our music program. Uh, we have over 85 plus majors, programs and concentrations offered at, at St. Olaf. Um, I think something that sets us apart is the learning communities uh, conversation programs that we offer. There are about five, six of them each year. For example, in doing conversations, Asian conversation. We have also environmental conversation. These are unique cohorts of um, students that will be exploring those unique themes throughout first year and second year, depending on the program, to dive deeper. For example, Asian conversation travels to China and Japan during their first year, which I think is a very fun and immersive way to continue the learning outside of the theory in the classroom. Um, one thing that uh, made me to St. Olaf above other colleges was their study abroad programs. Uh, we have been number one for 11 years, sending the most uh, number of students abroad every year in the United States. Uh, during my time at St. Olaf, I went abroad twice. My favorite program is called Global Semester that took me to six different countries during one semester. We went to France, Egypt, Tanzania, India, China, and Argentina. Uh, traveling with a group of St. Olaf students and being taught by the professors both in the countries and the one that was traveling with us. You can pick and choose which program you want to do. You can do an independent uh, study board program, let's say in University of Cairo in Egypt or University of Aberdeen in Scotland or travel with a group of St. Olaf students. Some really popular programs are theater in London. Um, you get to watch like 28 theater productions, write reflections about them, or you can do be, you can be doing the biology Peruvian experiment in Peru over the cold month in January, uh, when it's nice to be away in a warmer place. Um, another thing I would like to highlight is the music. So one third of our students, which is about thousand, it makes uh, them, 
do music. Um, one third of that one third are music majors. So this shows that you can major um, if you choose to. However, you don't have to major in music, arts, theater, or dance to be highly involved. Many of our students are very active um, in the fine arts uh, department. Um, another thing that made me choose St. Olaf above other colleges, I was looking for a community space learning environment where I would be able to pursue both my uh, educational aspirations and interests, but at the same time be supported and be in an environment where I would not be just a number among thousands of students. Um, I studied in an international boarding school and I, I had a very strong sense of belonging to my campus and I wanted to continue that in my college career as well. And so Nalav offered me that and beyond. I graduated last year and um, I have a very strong connection both with my peers who I studied with, but also the professors. Uh, and it's great because going to grad school, applying for jobs later, um, those mentors along the way that you meet can be very helpful. Um, in building your whole self um, as a whole. One way to um, get engaged on campus, uh, one of many is through the clubs and organizations. We have 200 plus, we have 26 varsity sports, club sports and intramurals, many ways to get engaged. We don't have Greek life on campus. Um, we have um, a lot of engagement in different pockets. So our um, diversity rate, so 25% uh, students of domestic students of color, we have 10% international students. Um, I don't think there is a single type of um, student that I can tell you that this is what St. Olaf students likes or does or looks like. So uh, we are very different from one another. You can be very much into sports, but at the same time pursue chemistry or physics. Um, almost half of our student population double majors. So it would be not uncommon to have someone um, um, doing music at the same time um, while doing chemistry and more. I personally did political science and I had concentrations in international relations and race and ethnic studies. Um, another important aspect of St. Olaf um, is our um, experiential learning aspect. Many of our students do internships, research opportunities both on and off campus. You can also do those opportunities abroad as well. Uh, some of my friends um, have done their research, many um, internships abroad in their home countries or a new country that they wanted to explore. There's a lot of funding and support coming your way. There's all, a lot of one-on-one -on -one coaching, both with career, academics, as well as mental, sexual, and physical health on campus. Um, some important deadlines for you, early decision one, November 1st, as well as early action. Early decision two would be January 15, and then regular decision January 15 again. The second column you see would be our um, notification uh, dates. Um, and um, just some numbers, uh, almost 80% of our students receive need-based financial aid, which comes in three forms, um, gift aid, work award, as well as some loans, and almost 98% um, of our students receive grants and scholarship. Uh, on top of that, we are committed to meeting 100% demonstrated needs, so I would not worry about the financial aid. Um, lastly, these are my um, contact information. Um, I would leave you with, I think, um, I would want you to leave with uh, knowledge that um, St. Olaf is a very supportive community-based environment where uh, you will both to you will both get to um, chase your academic aspirations as well as find the new ones, but um, do it in a very supportive environment, making lifelong friendships and really strong connections and network moving forward. Thank you very much. Thank you. So next up, we'll have Creighton University. Hello everyone, I'm Beth Piskel with Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. I am the Chicago Regional Admissions Officer, so I am the person who will read your application if you choose to apply to Creighton this year. Creighton is a Catholic graduate university. Um, one of the most unique things about Creighton is 
We are moderate in size, but incredibly complex academically with an enrollment of 4,500 undergraduate students and 4,500 graduate and professional students. Creighton is actually the most complex university of our size in the country. Our classes are all taught, taught by professors who you absolutely will get, will get to know. Um, with over 80% of our students coming from out of state, we are truly a residential university. Our undergraduate colleges include the College of Arts and Sciences, the Hyder College of Business, and the College of Nursing. There, um, these are the three um, colleges that high school seniors can apply to. We have a graduate school and professional schools of medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, physician assistant, and law. Creighton is quite well known for pre-professional study. Um, all of our graduate and professional programs grant an admission preference to Creighton undergraduate students who choose to apply. Um, many of our uh, professional programs offer early assurance opportunities. Creighton opened a new health science campus in Phoenix this past fall that includes a second Creighton Medical School and will grow to include many of our health professions. This addition has made Creighton the largest Catholic healthcare educator in the country. Creighton's College of Nursing offers the opportunity for direct admission from high school. Nursing students benefit from um, extensive clinical experiences that happen locally during the school year and then can happen um, in with internships during the summer. Our Hyder College of Business is direct entry and offers uh, incredible opportunities for experiential learning for the students. The campus is ideally situated with Fortune 500 companies being very close by. We are the only business college in the country offering both a four-year leadership development program and a four-year career development program for all business students. We offer several unique practicum experiences on campus. Our investment portfolio practicum gives students the opportunity to invest $6.5 million of our university endowment, offering a really a very real world experience. The IJ is the only Apple store, um, student run Apple store in the country, and it is located in our Hyder College of Business. Omaha is a beautiful city within a metro area of about a million people. Omaha was voted the number one city for paid internships, offering more paid internships per capita than any other city in the country. We actually have more internship opportunities than we have students. Um, Omaha was also voted the number one city for new college graduates because it's a fun place to live. Um, there are many job opportunities and the cost of living is low. We have hundreds of student clubs and organizations, including fraternity and sorority life, club and intramural sports, and many leadership opportunities. Because the vast majority of our students do come to us from out of state, they stay on campus on the weekends. This lends itself to students taking advantage of the opportunities both on campus and in the city. True to the ideals of Jesuit education, Creighton students are passionate about social justice and giving back to the community. We have local service opportunities happening virtually every day on campus. It's a huge Creighton tradition for students to spend their fall or spring breaks on service trips. In a typical year, our 8,500 students give more than a million hours to the community. Many Creighton students are committed to spiritual growth. Um, they enjoy our beautiful St. John's Parish, which is centrally located on our campus. Campus ministry is vibrant and many students take advantage of the retreat opportunities. There is incredible school spirit at Creighton. We are division one and part of the Big East Conference. Attendance at our home basketball games averages 18,000, which places Creighton in the fifth spot for college attendance. Um, we are a host to the College World Series, which is a super fun um, summer activity. Um, all Creighton students are given tickets free of charge to all of our home sporting events. Um, our community will be cheering for our women's basketball team this weekend as they compete in, uh, compete in the Sweet 16. We offer many study abroad opportunities, including our Global Scholars Program. Students in this program have four study abroad experiences during their four-year undergraduate program of study. Um, we also have a unique service learning campus located in the Dominican uh, Republic where students can go for a semester or for part of a summer. 
We are super proud of our outcomes. Um, in, in the past few years, um, our College of Nursing has had between 99 and 100% placement with our College of Arts and Sciences and College um, of Business being um, equally impressive. Students can submit an application for admission starting August 1 um, before their senior year. All of our undergraduate colleges offer the option to apply test optional. Um, we, um, our um, early action deadline is November 1 and our regular deadline is the 1st of December. Um, I want to thank you um, for your interest. Um, we do um, have individual visits Monday to Friday and um, have an open house for juniors coming up on Sunday, April 24th. Thank you. Thank you so much. I would love to ask all of our representatives to come back on the screen um, to answer a few questions. We have a couple of minutes before we end our session um, to just give some words of wisdom um, to you. And we're gonna answer these questions in the same order we presented. Um, so the first question I'm gonna give out to you is what advice would you give someone going through the college search process? Okay, guess I'm up first. Um, my piece of advice is to think outside of the box and be brave in terms of the colleges that you select um, that you want to consider. Um, there's so many amazing colleges and universities out there that I encourage you to explore some maybe that you've never heard of, um, some one that are close, some that are far. Um, so have fun with that process. Hey everyone. Um, so I recently just told a student the other day, like. When you're looking into this process, like be yourself, uh, especially when it comes to the uh, the essay. I know like students get very nervous around the, the essay writing uh, and, and meeting the expectations for the prompts. But the, the key is to just be authentically you. Uh, don't don't tell us the things that you think we want to hear, because chances are we don't. We want to hear everything about you and what makes you come alive as a student. Um, and that is, is, is what helps to drive, if you select, whatever university you select, that essay that you write helps to drive you forward uh, as you think about how you uh, journey through the undergraduate process. And even in the admissions process as well, you may discover new things along the way. Um, but I think it's important to just be yourself uh, and know who you are in that space uh, when you're you know, applying to a college. I would say it's super important uh, to visit to, if you have the means, if you you have time off school or on the weekend, um, get out to different campuses, look at different sizes, try to get an understanding of the city of what's important to you in a college. And that can really help narrow down the ones you're applying to and just really understand um, the community and who you will be on their campus. And I think you get that best in person um, as a lot of websites kind of start to blend by the end of it. I actually have two pieces of advice. One that I gave to my children when they were looking at colleges and universities is make sure that when you are selecting a school that there are several things that you're interested in. Because if you choose a school that has a very narrow focus and there's only one major that interests you, if you've developed friendships but your interests have changed, you may not have the ability to stay at that university and continue those friendships through. So that was one piece of advice I gave them. The second one I gave them was um, take a look at what's important for you. Is it the distance from home? Is it the majors that they offer at the school? Is it the fact that you're going to be able to still participate in um, things that you've done in high school and you want to continue those in college? What are your questions? for looking and evaluating your criteria for college because they're different for every student. Make a list of those and then as you visit, as you go and see those different colleges or as you learn more about them, write down your answers to those so that when you have applied and you've time to come after you've received all of your many acceptances, you're going to be able to say, ah, this is one the one that meets my criteria because this is what I've been assessing these schools by. Thank you, thank you everyone. Uh, I agree and, and I think I would add as well, um, look at the support systems that the, that the colleges are offering, um, be it career, be it um, well-being as a whole, 
Um, I think this is very important. And to me, um, coming from a very different system, non-Western, moving to the US, I think a lot of things had shifted. So also look at um, the environment of the school. Um, where do you want to see yourself? Like city, climate, um, do you want to, someone mentioned how far you want to be from home or maybe it will be a good opportunity to become more independent. I think these are things that um, I didn't consider much in depth and I got very lucky with uh, St. Olaf. I ended up really liking my experience, but if cold, for example, is something is not for you and you want to go somewhere warmer, take that into consideration, listen to yourself, you know? So um, yes, programs and everything is important, but also look at the environment where you will be for the four years at college. So first of all, I want to say have fun with this process. It's such an exciting time in your life. And um, I understand that it, it can be stressful, but it can be super fun because you're having the opportunity to explore new places. Um, realize that what's right for your friends might not be right for you. You know, um, there, there is no right or wrong, big school, small, close to home, far away. You know, it depends on, on really what you're the most comfortable with. And take advantage of any opportunity you have to learn about the culture on the campus. That's the hardest piece to get online. You know, you can, you know, the facts and the figures, you, you, can, you can look that all up, but getting a sense about the culture and the nature of the people, that's trickier. And so taking advantage, whether it's receptions held in local areas where you might have the chance to meet, you know, alumni or events on campus. And, and when you're on campus, don't be in such a hurry to leave. People come and it's like they're in such a hurry to go home. So take some time, go to the coffee shop, talk to the students, talk about what they like and, and get, a, get a sense about what they're experiencing. All right, thank you so much. I hope you were taking notes, students and families, because they gave some great information to you. I wanna thank you, we are out of time. So when you close this, this box, you'll have a quick survey, a five question survey, give us your feedback. There were more sessions happening tonight at the top of the hour, the next session is happening. So hopefully you're coming back to see us soon. Um, so sign up for more of those sessions. Also, this has been recorded and the other sessions during this time have been recorded. You can find them at strivescan.com forward slash Ignatius. All right. Have a good night. Bye.